Hey, Dad. Yo. I think there's something wrong with the water softener. What's wrong with it? I don't know. My skin's all dry and, and flaky, and my hair is, is not it, as soft as it was. Did you look in any of the toilets to see if it blew apart? <laughs> I mean, I haven't personally, but that'd probably be a good first step. Let's look in the toilet and see what it looks like. <laughs> all right. What is happening, trade family? My name is the Plumbing Princess, also known as Anna. I flipped that around. Did you see what I did this time? Bamboozled you. We, we, as in me and my dad, where are you going? Where are you going? Uh, we. Somebody's in that bathroom. <laughs> okay, anyways. Two to go. <laughs> we are going to be rebuilding a water softener today. The water softener at my old man's house decided to take a shot. So, we are going to do some diagnostics here and get that rebuilt and bring you along the way. If you think your water softener took a poop, go to your toilet tanks. There you go. If you got some applesauce looking stuff going on up in the bottom of your tank, that is resin. How does that get in there? Well, once the water softener starts to degrade, the resin will basically travel through your piping system. So this is the softener in question. We're taking this guy into custody. The culprit. <laughs> So, Dad, what brand water softener is this? Uh, the it's it's a fleck. A fleck. When you say brand of softener, what you really mean is what kind of head is it? Oh, okay. So the tanks and the parts and stuff don't necessarily matter, but it's the electrical components to it. Yeah, they all work the same. I don't care. Well, I think they work the same. Uh, there's a tank, a resin tank with resin in it, and it's just different sizes to improve how much resin is in it to improve the amount of water that can go through it and then there's a brine tank that has salt in it or potassium if you don't want salt and uh, they're pretty basic and so the only thing that usually is different is what kind of head is on the top as far as i'm concerned cool cool, cool. And fleck is very popular and clack and general general electric makes some i think that's about all i know about right there jenny <laughs> There's salt pellets in front. So this is our brine tank. At the bottom of the tank is the salt. And we have to actually get that, the salt water and, and um, salt pellets out of there because we have to lift this up over the washing machine because it's a little bit of a tight squeeze. Right, Daddy-o? That's it. So now that we went ahead and removed the salt in the water from the brine tank with a wet and dry vac, I'm going to go ahead and remove the brine line using a pair of small channel locks. Whoop. Let's see if that's loose enough. Yep. As soon as something is loose enough, you can just use your hands to untighten it and go from there. All right, she's loose. Pull this guy out of here, nice and slow. Okay. We got the tank out of the way. What are we doing? We're about to turn the water off at the main. Why are we gonna do that? Because we want to relieve the pressure on the softener. Oh, and why would we want to do that? So we don't blow the O-rings off. And blow some water in your face, maybe? Yeah, that's also not a fun thing to All right. have happen. So how do you turn that off? Well, take off the lid. Okay. Take a basin wrench. Okay. Yeah, go this way. Fucking hook that on to that guy. And then just slowly match up the, the little holes. The holes together. You can do it. Alright. Boom. Good, good, good. Okay. Go ahead and relieve the pressure. Turn her on. There we go. Alright, pressure's off. Just want to do a quick shout out to Unilite. They haven't sponsored this video or anything, but they sent me these really super awesome uh, lights here. This is a really nice, expensive headlamp. 
um, that's battery operated so you can charge the battery and then you can also uh, put like individual batteries in it if you you know so let's say you forgot to charge your batteries and they give you two of them they gave me two of them man and they gave two rechargeables <laughs> i know freaking awesome thank You're you so much for like a million hours of beautiful <laughs> life and then what does this do dad like what that even is, is that light and a half yeah plus it it has a uv oh, oh look at that Brighter than the sun. <laughs> oh, Don't God. shine it at me. Oh, I'm trying to turn it off. It's a beast. <laughs> and then if you need to find a leak on an air conditioning system, you put dye in it, and this will be like, there's the leak. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's All awesome. Right. It's a multitasker. So thank you again, Unilite. You guys are the best. 600 lumens. <laughs> that is a monster, except I can't see now because it was right in my eyes. Uh oh, I guess I'm going to have to finish this video by myself. I forgive Unilite. <laughs> All right. All right. We are underneath the stairwell. My dad plumbed in this beautiful system here. This is a bypass for the water softener. 10 for Roger Wilco. <laughs> and we reconfigured the piping so it could be a true soft water system. We left the hose bibs. How do we, what do we leave them? Hard. hard. And the cold to the kitchen sink is? Hard. Hard. Per Beautiful. code. Why do we do that? It's a code. What, why did I plumb it so there's hard water to the kitchen sink and hard water to the hose bibs? Because it's probably not a super swell idea to water your plants with salt water or and to cook with salt water. And maybe not drink it either. Or, huh? Yeah, don't drink it either. It's probably not the best thing for your system. Boom. <laughs> there you go. Yep. So these two are off. So that way it's not supplying the water softener and the water softener is not putting anything back into the system. Instead, the water is just going to come up, say, oh, no, nope, can't go that way. Oop, no, can't go that way. And then you just come back down and go right back into the system. And then we'll show them what it looks like when we're going to engage the softener, huh? Exactly. Boom. And so Anna's disconnecting the softener. There's just a couple of quarter inch screws on these flak systems. And there's just this little steel clip. Just pull it straight off. Oh, that didn't release the pressure. Water <laughs> dripping. Okay. Water's still dripping. Why? Oh, because we didn't take it out of bypass. <laughs> Whoopsies. Okay, same thing on the other side. I'm not, not put my face right up next no, to it. No, it'll stuff. be fine. Okay. Really good. So then you're just going to kind of wiggle worm it out. Oh, this guy? Yeah. Make sure it'd be good if it was unplugged. Don't grab it by the head. Grab it by the body. There you go. Ooh. Okay. Now we got to disconnect that black hose. That's the drain for the head when you're flushing all the cootie bugs out. And this is what the calcium does to the pipe. To give you an idea. Let's see. See how this is green? Mm -hmm. That's that's from the, the calcium being flushed down the drain. And that's what happens to your pipes if you don't do it. Fun fact, that's why the Statue of Liberty is that same color. Boom. <laughs> so let me just wiggle this. It's the back part. It's the back part. These are the O-rings. These are the O-rings we didn't want to blow off, but there we, go. we were lucky that they didn't go anywhere. And mm -hmm. that just slides into that brass chingola dingola. But a lot of softeners, you'll just undo it at those nuts. Yep. But that's, that's how I've installed because them. Because we're before. high tech, this is how we roll. Okay. <laughs> What's the question? I don't know, but something's funny in the back there. So, what does this tank here do? It contains the resin. Okay, and what does the resin do? The resin gets a little electric charge on it from the brine, the salt, and that's what attracts the calcium to it. Okay. And then after a period of time, then it goes through a cycle and flushes all that calcium down that drain. And that is why that drain is so rusted, huh? So, yeah, so calcified. The, the calcium chews it all up, wow. the, which is the purpose for having a water softener, especially where water is hard, which is in Las Vegas and Arizona and wherever. Mm -hmm. So 
we have particularly very hard water here. All right, very good. Okay, and so basically <laughs> we are replacing the resin that's inside of this tank, correct? And the distributor. And the distributor, and, which is, this and, is the distributor? No, the distributor will be at the bottom of the resin tank, which we'll see. And there's a piston in this that's being a dirt muffin. So we're gonna change that too. <laughs> awesome, all right, well, let's do it. All right. Anna is unscrewing the water softener head. It goes, pulls right off. Ooh. And she's taking the whole distributor with it. This is a whole, you want me to? Yeah, go ahead, just pull her all out. Well, or that, that works too. Butamus, butamus. Okay then. Go ahead and roll that uh, bad boy. To the dirt? Yeah, and to the dirt. There you go. Good job, good job, Anna. Good job. Whoa. All right, look at that. Mmm, yellow. Alrighty then. What do you think, Anna? I'm hungry. All right. Shout out to Timberland Pro. Sending me these, sending me these awesome boots. We got a little crack ski. Cracky two ski, as my dad would like to call it. And it's really tiny too. It it like it's so small, and the resin was able to get through that. Crazy, crazy. A new one! Boom! Oh yeah. High performance turbocharged. 1 to 190 in 2.3 seconds. <laughs> so yeah, that's the this is the old one. This is the new one. As you can see, it is a quite an upgrade. Are these both the same length? Nope. This one's a little shorter. This is the one we pulled. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe we should go with the shorter. Too long is bad. Right. Too long is bad because we don't want to put pressure on the bottom. This is what happens when it's too long. There you go. Bendy, bendy. This it's is like the crooked man. This is plumbing, not yoga. Okay. There we go. <laughs> All right. Okay, maybe we'll go with this length. Okay. So let's get a measuring tape. Did you know that PVC glue will not work without the primer? Beautiful. Okay. Grew and grew. Grew and grew. So how do you prefer to do your glue, Dad? Fitting first or pipe first or you don't care? I do it fitting first. So we don't want the glue going into the distributor. That would not be helpful. Okay, so that's got to dry a while, I can just tell, because it's a little loosey-goosey on the pipe for whatever reason. All right, so we put this down, let her dry. We're gonna undo the back, undo this. Now the things that we're showing, do you think realistically, if somebody was watching this and wanted to do this, but they didn't have these specific models, they would still be able to apply this knowledge generally? Yeah. yeah. As far as disassembling it. Right. So. So we're doing this because you said the piston was being a little bit of a. It was leaking. Piston was leaking. Piston was leaking. So now we're gonna take, I, and I wanna put this head on there cause it's a little more modern, but I'd be taking a chance. So we do the two screws and we got a screw here in the middle. Okay, so this is a meter connection. This is the electrical connection. And now, we do this thing. Now we take this off. I wanna play around with this. Boom. Nice. So this stacks like this, that much we know, and then this guy should pop out, that much we know. So we got all the uh, rings and spacers. I don't know if I want to do that, but I did it. Okay. Is that the new one? This is the newer head.
So this is what we took out. Okay. We took out the piston, whatever they call it. This is... Any, any of our water softener specialist guys watching this, feel free to comment down below whatever that piece is. Yeah. So we are about to start testing our system here. We went ahead and finished putting this back together. Put in our new... Right, so, so we glued our new distributor on. There you go. It barely fit in there. That's lucky. It just barely goes in the groove. Boom. Which makes it groovy. And then we need a little funnel. Do you see a funnel anywhere? One cubic foot, which I think is 32,000 grains. Just 32,000. Dad, what are we doing? We're testing out a softener to see if we made, made it work good or not. We put a new uh, differential in it. I'm sorry, distributor, uh, new pistons, new That's seals. I changed it to an electronic head that's newer than the one I had. Very cool. So we have a water hose that are just regular water hose hooked up to it. We went ahead and brought just an extra tank over here. Um, so this is the inlet. This would be the outlet, correct? Uh, yeah. All right. It's just the color of the new resin. So it's okay for it to be yellow like that? Yeah. So we have the hose hooked up. My dad went ahead and ran an extension cord. We haven't plugged it in just yet. We're flushing it through really slowly, right? So we don't blow the resin out of the tank. Correct. Nice. Man, it makes me want to go swimming. So we tested her. Things are looking okay. And dad's just getting her back in to where she was before. All right, everybody, so here's the final product. Um, we're not 100% done yet. My dad had to change out the head of the softener because the other one was giving an error code and he was just not having it. So he went ahead and just replaced that one back to the old one, um, which works way better and doesn't give error codes. Um, we went ahead and put the tank back in. We have not put the brine yet in. I'm sorry, the salt yet in, excuse me. Um, and the water and things like that, but he ran it through a cycle. Um, everything's looking really good, sounding really good. So yeah. So I hope that this video was educational and fun. I uh, apologize if it's a longer one, but I hope you guys stuck all the way through. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Again, thank you so much to Unilite for sending me those lights. Thank you to Timberland Pro for sponsoring me and allowing me to wear the boots that I was wearing today in my video and this jacket. By the way, really cool jacket. There it is, Timberland Pro. <laughs> All right, I will see you guys later. I want to say next week because I really have a goal of posting every week. We'll see if that happens. <laughs> All right, anyways, I'll see you guys later. Bye.